Right, so I think I've waffled on for long enough. I'm going to teach you how to set up the show in a bit, but just to break it up, Lewis has a couple of routines he's been doing with the Eclipse deck since he had his. Mm. Uh, so why don't you talk to the people about your work? I shall do. Instead of just <laughs> making my work better. Yeah, well, thank you. <laughs> All right, so when I introduce ESP symbols, I don't talk about psychics or psychic testing or labs or things like that. I don't give them the whole JB Ryan. I can't, was that his name? JB Ryan. I don't even know the guy's name, so don't use yeah. the story. JB Ryan. JB Ryan and I Carl Zenner. Don't bother with any of that. It's, I mean, it's interesting to us because we're mentalists. We're into this thing. The history of this is interesting to us. But to everyday people, honestly, they don't care. I mean, I suppose it depends on your style and your presentation, but if I've told people that story... I found myself wishing I hadn't and just did the routine anyway. But just because of my style and my presentation, when I introduce these symbols, I usually say something along the lines of this. So for what we're about to do, we're going to be using these cards that contain a variety of different symbols for a very specific reason. If you were to look at the earliest cave paintings that you can find, no matter where in the world you look, you will find these same symbols just keep coming back over and over and over. And in a way, it was like the earliest human language, and they weren't words, they were symbols. It's the earliest documentation of human thought, which not only makes it incredibly interesting for me and the work that I do, but because they were used for hundreds of thousands of years, they're embedded deep within the human psyche, which makes them a perfect tool for what we're about to do. The symbols themselves were these. A circle, which would represent the sun, because without it, there'd be no life on earth, and the earliest humans understood that. The cross would represent the coming together of elements, whether that was hands to create tools or even pe uh, like creating tools in order to survive or cook and things like that, or even the coming together of people, because again, the earliest humans understood the most important thing in life was to survive and replicate. So the coming together of elements. The wavy lines would represent either the sea or water. Again, we understand the importance of that. The square would represent shelter. Again, the most important thing for survival. And then the star would represent the night sky and all of the mystery it contains. So it's, it's a beautiful way of introducing the symbols. And then usually I'd go into an ESP matchup routine. I've got two ways of doing this. Firstly, if it's just one on one, they would take the symbols, uh, mix them up a little bit. I'd take mine. And now I know there are methods where the mentalist can put their shape down first and then the spectator place theirs down. I, I, I don't bother with that. You really don't need to. And I disguise it as a reading and Yes, my symbols are going to match theirs, and it just kind of proves that the things I'm saying during my reading have some, some weight to them. It's like, if I knew you would choose this symbol, I'm going to give you the reason why. So they take a look at the symbols, and I don't ask them to pick them one at a time. I say, place four of them down uh, in a row on the table, face down in any order you like, but save one for yourself. So I let them do this. They don't have to remember the order the symbols are in. This has to be instinctive, intuitive, automatic, and they keep one for themselves. I say to them, now the only question I'll ask you is this, do you want me to start from this end or do you want me to start from this end? And by doing that, it gives me a chance to look at what's over here and then it gives me a chance to look at what's over here. So I look here and I know this is the circle and I look here and I know this is the square. So it just gives me an opportunity to look at those shapes. I say, okay, the only question I'll ask you is this, do you want me to start from this end or do you want me to start from this end? They decide. We'll start from that end. And then I behave as though it means something. Okay, we'll start from here. I look them right in the eye. And I say, now, forgive me for being quiet while I do this. I, will con I do need to concentrate. And all I'm doing is finding that circle. And then as I place it down, I look at the next one. And I know this is the wavy line. So I look back at them and I say, all right. Uh, okay. And I, I, I kind of want to do this a little bit quickly because I'm going to be talking to them quite a bit during the reveals. So again, I've placed that symbol down. I look at the next one. I know this is the cross. I look back at them. The cross goes down. And again, I've looked here, so I know this is the square. So I'm left with two. And I place the square down. So now I'm left holding a card and so are they. Now, I'm not going to go into depth on how I gave readings. I've put out so much of that stuff already and especially plenty of things with the 1914. Um, but I just talk about the shapes and the symbols metaphorically and I try and elaborate on them in a metaphorical way. The structure I give the reading is the card they've left them, because this was a choice they made, they kept themselves with this one. So this, I, 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 I see it as their personality. What can I sense about this person's personality? Now, 
in my reveal, before I show them I'm holding the star, I say, I get a sense that you're this kind of person, that kind of person. I'm basically just elaborating on what the, the star could symbolize or mean. So I've talked to them about their personality, and I say, and for that reason, I think you kept the star for yourself. And of course they did. Now I've got four things left to reveal. So I simply do this past, present, future, and goals for the future. So now, so I've, I've just revealed this, we're both holding the star. And I say, now you wanted me to start at this end. So whichever end they say, it doesn't matter, I just change it. So in this case, it'd be past, present, future, and kind of goals and ambitions. All right then, so starting over here, I place the circle. My reason for this is, now through the, through the frame or like the context of their past, I'm gonna elaborate on the circle. Again, I'm not gonna talk in depth about how to give readings here, but that's what I do. I'll be talking about the circle and relating it to this person's past. And I say, let's see what you put. They turn this over and of course it's the circle. I then say, all right then, now for your present, I chose this. And I'm kind of, I, I, I don't want this to be a reveal because they're probably gonna remember they've put that anyway. Uh, anybody else watching doesn't know that, but they're gonna start to react a little bit and start to smile. They're getting excited because they know I've got this right. But instead of me just turning them over, look, they match, they match, they match. I'm saying my reason for choosing this is because in your, uh, in your present life right now, I feel blah, 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 whatever I want to say about this. Let's take a look at what you put. Then for your future, this is what I chose. I wasn't sure about this one because I feel you're making some decisions at the moment, potentially life changing or whatever you want to say. We take a look at this. And then finally, their goals and ambitions for the future itself. Talk about this as much as you want before I turn it over, because now I can give them a little reading. I know what the symbol is. Give them a reading. And then finally, I turn the last two cards over for that final reveal. So yes, it's a matchup, but it's built into a reading. And you could just carry this deck with you in your pocket. You wouldn't need tarot cards. You wouldn't need to read palms. You could give an entire reading on just this alone. And the great thing is you can repeat this. And the readings you give each time will be different because you might have stock lines that you say for certain cards but you're gonna be giving them a different context because it might be the past, the present, or the future, or whatever it is that you're doing with it. And I think it's just a really simple way of doing a matchup, but it's not just then an intellectual game of snap. You're, you, you're, you've got reasons for making the decisions you've made. So yes, not only are you giving them a wonderful reading, but there's, 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 that, there's that little moment of, okay, maybe there is something to what he's saying here because all of the symbols match. All of the decisions he made for me were the decisions I made for myself. Now, a great way of doing this without the readings for a couple, and I only ever do this for a couple because there's a beautiful moment at the end. So let's say I'm sat with a couple and I give the cards to the lady and I give her the same instructions. I say, take a look at them, place four of them down in a row on the table, keeping one for yourself. And it's important they do that. They don't show anybody what they put down. They don't show anybody what they're holding. Excellent. So they've placed four cards face down in a row. They've kept hold of one for themselves. I do the same thing again. The only question I'll ask you is this. Do you want me to start from this end or this end? Now I've just seen the star over here and the square is over here. So I, I don't really need to look back at the cards. I have the... So let's say this is a husband and wife. The wife has just done this. The husband is sat next to me here. Uh, which Do you want me to start here or here? It's we'll up to you. start over there. Andy. Over there. Okay, so I'm looking at them and I say again, please forgive me if I'm a little quiet while we do this. I do need to concentrate. I put down the star. I look at the next one. I see this is the square. I look at them. The square goes down. I look at my next one. I know that's the circle. I place this one down. And now I need to look at what this one is and I see that it's the cross. Actually, no, it's not. I've made a little mistake there. What is this one? Oh, no, it is the wavy lines, and that's exactly what I've left with. I'm getting ahead of myself because I'm trying to explain this while demonstrating it. All right, so all of this is right, and so is this. I've got one final decision left to make on the table, and of course I know which one it needs to be because I'm left holding wavy lines, and the marking here is for wavy lines, which means they're holding the cross. But it's at this moment I turn to the husband and I say... The final decision is the most difficult. Well, if I get this one wrong, I've also got the last one wrong. This is the most difficult decision to make, so you're the only person here that can do this. You know each other far better than I know you, and you're the only person that can make the correct decision here. It's important that you do this without thinking. You're not gonna make a conscious decision. If you try and guess which one needs to be placed down here, this will go wrong. This has to be automatic. And I kind of, I, I say that because I don't want them thinking, hmm, which one could it be, which one could it be? because I'm gonna change my descript depending on which one they touch. 
Now I know I need the husband to touch the wavy lines for it to go down here. So I say to them, without thinking about this, just touch one of those symbols. Now, if they touch the wavy lines, that's great. I place it down, I say, now you've just made my final decision for me, take hold of this. I give them that. And if he's made the final decision, it was the right one, I start from the very end, so start with the first one, I place these, yep, I place it. so these all match. We get to here and it's like, but this is the decision you made, you chose this one. So if these are wrong, then the ones you're holding are wrong as well. And then we turn these over, they match, and of course the ones in the hands match. But let's say the husband chose the wrong one to place down on the table. It needs to be the wavy lines. Without thinking about this, just uh, follow your instincts, touch one of these. If he touches the cross, I say, excellent, take hold of that for me. They do. I place the wavy lines down on the table, and I say, now when you were given an opportunity to keep one of these for yourself, that's the one you chose. And when you were given an opportunity to touch one of these and keep that for yourself, you also went with this one. Which is nice, because then we can go through the final, re final reveal. Um, these are all turned over. When we get to this final moment, it's like, now, neither of us chose that, we were left with it. The most important cards here are the ones that you chose for yourselves. And of course, this is a married couple, or they're in a relationship together. On the count of three, turn your, shape, uh, turn your cards around, show each other what you chose. And it's just nice for a couple to see that they've both chosen the same symbol. And then, of course, these match here. So it's kind of like, with that presentation with the couple, you are doing most of it. But when it does come down to that final decision, the one that could potentially mess up the ending because there's two cards left, you're turning to the husband or the wife or whatever and saying, you're going to make this final decision. You're the only person here that can do this. I can't. So without thinking about it, just touch one of these. And if they touch the one that needs to go on the table, perfect, you've just made my final decision. Hold on to this. If they touch the wrong one, I say, excellent, take hold of that. When you, were when you were given the opportunity to take one of these for yourself, you chose that. When you were given that same opportunity, you chose that one. And then I let those be the final reveal. It's just a nice little thing to do. For Honestly, try that for a couple and it's lovely, it's beautiful. Because it takes the ending, like, yes, you're demonstrating your skill, but then the ending is for them, not for you. It's got nothing to do with you and I think that's beautiful. Yeah, I love it. One final thing um, that I'd like to talk about is a really simple routine that I call the butterfly. And I use this with a greater purpose, which you'll see in just a moment. This only uses five cards. So I think, uh, have you got five there? I believe you have. Hi. Excellent. So I've introduced the symbols with the script I talked about at the beginning. I invite somebody to take them, mix them up face down. And then when you finish mixing them, place them face down in the palm of my hand. Now, I only really do this if there's a group of people watching. So I've got one spectator up here with me and maybe two, three or four other people watching this happen. These have been mixed, they've been placed in my hand. I turn to them and I say, now in a moment, I'm gonna look away. Whatever card has ended up on top, take it and have a look at it. And remember it, that's gonna be your chosen symbol. And I've got all the time in the world I need to look at these markings. So they've placed them in my hand. I turn back and say, now in a moment, I'm gonna look away. I want you to take this card off the top, have a look at it, and I want you to remember it. That's gonna be your chosen symbol. It's gonna be our target. Now I know this is the cross. So I've given them the simplest instruction. I turn away, they take that symbol, they have a look, and I say, now I'd like you to give that card to any one of the people watching here. And I really make efforts to make sure that they don't think I'm looking who has it. So they give that to one of the random spectators. And I say, excellent. Now with whatever's left, just take the rest and hand them to everyone else. So what we'll be left with is one person holding your chosen symbol, the, your target, and everybody else will be holding a random one. So those are passed, about, about, passed out to however many people are left. Now when I turn back around, they don't know I know what their symbol is. So I'm left with a group of people with a card each. I say, excellent, you're going to work with me on this. I'd like you to turn them so the faces of cards are pointing towards us, but don't look directly at your symbol. I don't want you to think I'm following your eyes. You know who has it, but I don't. That's important. Now the thing is, because I know they chose the cross at the beginning, when all of the spectators turn these around, how this looks is, everyone has a card, but there's no way I could know which one the target is. And of course I know it's the cross because the cards are marked, and now I can see who's stood there with the cross. But then what I do is this. I say to my spectator, now I'd like you to take hold of my wrist very gently. Um, you're not going to guide or force my hand in a particular direction, but you're not going to stop it either. All you're going to do is just think, and using your thoughts alone, you're going to guide my hand. 
All I'm going to do is simply follow the internal directions you're giving me, but you're also going to follow me. We're going to work together to do this. Now what I'm doing is testing for muscle reading. Now, I'm 100% going to get this right because I know they chose the cross and I know this person has it. So I can do this as much as I want and then find who has the cross. And of course, you could repeat this if you wanted to. But I, I do genuinely want to test for, okay, can I do some real muscle reading with this person? So I say to them, now, before we focus on your symbol, I want you to imagine that a butterfly has flown into the room and landed on the shoulder of any one of these people. So take a look at the people in front of you and imagine that a butterfly has landed on their shoulder. And in your mind, try and see it sitting right there on their shoulder. Excellent. So they've done that. They're imagining this butterfly sat on somebody's shoulder. And I say, now, only in your mind, only using your mind, guide me to the person with the butterfly. And all I'm doing here is taking the path of least resistance. I'm just moving my arm around and I'm seeing, basically, which way are they suggesting that I go? Which way is their hand automatically suggesting? If I move this way and there's a bit of resistance, I know I need to go this way. If I go too far and there's a bit more resistance, I know it's somewhere in the middle. And there's not really any way of explaining this in a way that you could go and do it instantly. You've just got to try it for yourself. But because I've got the guaranteed hit of the symbol, it doesn't matter if I get the butterfly wrong. Now, if this is working great and they're I can feel that they're guiding me to the right person. I say, okay, I feel that this person has the butterfly, am I right? If they say yes, great. Now I know I can do muscle reading with this person. If they say no, I can simply say, interesting. Now I know what we, we need to do, let's swap sides. And I behave as though they're swapping sides and they take, my, take hold of my other wrist. I behave as though that has something to do with what's going on. So all right, now we're playing for real. Think about your shape, your chosen symbol, but don't look directly at it and try not to look at any of the others. Just think, guide me with your thoughts. And now, of course, I know exactly where it is because I know what the symbol was to begin with. So what this allows me to do is test to see if I can do some muscle reading with this person. And if they're really good for it, if I can find that butterfly, then I can simply say to them, great, you have a connect. You seem to have a connection with this symbol. I'm going to close my eyes, take that card and go and hide it somewhere in the room or go and give it to anybody else in the room and then take hold of my wrist and then because it worked well with the butterfly, I should be able to go and find the card. If it didn't work so well with the butterfly, I simply say, that's fine. Now I know what we need to do. Let's swap sides. And they take hold of my, my other wrist as though that's got anything to do with it and then I just find the symbol. That of course can be repeated with different people because the cards are marked. You'll always know who has it. So again, the, the instructions are the simplest things in the world. They take the cards, they shuffle them, they place them face down in your hand. Say, now in a moment, I'm going to look away. Whatever card has ended up on top, take that, have a look at it, remember it, that's going to be your one. Then I'd like you to place that card, uh, to give that card to any person here, but I'm going to do that with my back turn. So they take a look at what it is. They remember the symbol, they hand it to somebody else. And I say, now take the rest of them and give these to everybody else. So everybody is holding a card, but there's no way I could know who has the symbol you're thinking of. And then when I turn back around, and the beauty about these marked these mark cards is you don't even need to see the faces of them. The markings are so good here, all of these people could just be there with a card like this. And you can simply see, so for example, if they had the square, I'm just looking for that square. And I can do that under the cover of this person guiding me for the butterfly. So imagine a butterfly lands on somebody's shoulder, take my wrist, you're going to guide me with your thoughts, your thoughts only. And now I'm just looking at the marked cards to find the, the square or whatever this symbol was. I have a go at finding the butterfly. If I'm right, it's beautiful. If I'm wrong, we switch sides. But it's really nice because it's such a simple routine. You can repeat it with somebody else. They can go and sit back down. You can get somebody else up to come and do this. And if you can find that butterfly, then, then, try, it, then, then try another muscle reading technique because now you've, you, you've used these cards as a gateway. As a gateway, yeah. Mm. No, and, and not only as a gateway, but you've used them to, to figure out if you can take this a step further and do something even more beautiful. So if they had chosen the cross, for example, excellent. You clearly have some sort of connection to this symbol. You could give them a reading on that if you're interested. Or you could say, look, I'm going to look away. I'm going to close my eyes. Go and place that card anywhere in the room. Make sure it's hidden. And then come and, come and join me. Tap me on the shoulder when you're done. You turn around, take the wrist. And then again, just trust that you'll be able to find it. And uh, very nice. It's, yeah, it's beautiful. But yeah, the imaginary butterfly. I used to do it the mm. other way around. I used to first find the symbol and then try the butterfly because I think that's beautiful. You, you're locating an imaginary animal on somebody's shoulder. 
But if that doesn't work well, you're left with a miss rather than a hit. Whereas if you start with the butterfly, yeah, yeah. whether that misses or not, doesn't matter because then you've got the definite hit. And then you cover that by simply saying, ah, okay, I know what's going on, let's swap sides. Are you right? And then you can tie in the whole, are you right-handed or left-handed? Oh, okay, you're right now. Well, let's try this with your non-dominant hands, connected to your subconscious mind anyway. Give it whatever nonsense you need to cover that miss and you'll always have the hit of the symbol. Yeah, it's good. I remember seeing you do it the other way around. Yeah. And luckily, it did work. Mm. But if it hadn't worked, you would have had to talk your way out, yeah, out exactly. of it. Yeah. Uh, so it is a lot more logical to do it that way around so that, I mean, I'm, I'm a big advocate of having uh, a guess at something yeah. uh, or an educated guess at something, knowing that I've got that something at the end. It's like with Iris. Mm. It's the perfect way to practice readings because even if you miss on your reading lines, you've got that solid information yeah, there 100%. ready to go, you know? And that's what and it's the same that, thing that with, so with If you this. look at any psychics out there, or any supposed genuine psychics, not everything they say hits anyway, so why are we trying to do better when, when really it's okay enough for them to miss? If you were genuinely psychic, not every single word you say. Basically, if you were genuinely psychic, you'd simply be speaking your impressions down to them whether or not they can recognize them or identify mm. with them um, you're speaking your impressions and you're just saying look I'll tell you everything I see think and feel some of this will make perfect sense to you some of it won't but that's okay but if I don't tell you everything I might miss some important details and then you've just bought yourself license to say anything <laughs> you want another nice thing as well is to potentially so once you've introduced the symbols um, well let's say we've just got the five symbols there you've introduced them and say to your spectator, which one of these is your favorite? And let them say whatever they want. Then once these are collected and they've shuffled them and placed them face down in your hand, when you turn back and you see their markings, if the one they said was their favorite is on top, you can say, now you mix these in any order you want. At the beginning, you told me your favorite. You were drawn to it in some way. Now you could have put these cards in any order, but this is the exact order you've left them in. In a moment, I'm going to look away and I want you to take a look at the card that's on top and I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at what you've been able to do. Now, if, 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 if their favourite card is not on top, it doesn't matter. You ask them at the beginning, which one's your favourite? Oh, cool. Then move on. <laughs> if the favourite is there, you've got Happy this wonderful days. moment. Yeah. And if it's not there, don't mention the favourite card again. But here's the nice thing. If you look and their favourite symbol's there, now at the beginning, uh, you could have left these in any order you want, but this is the order you've left them in. At the beginning, you told me your favorite symbol was the star. I'm going to look away, take a look at whichever card has landed on the very top, and I think you'd be surprised at what you've been able to do. And of course, if it's the star, you can then say, you can turn back to them and say, see, at the beginning, you identified a, a connect, some sort of connection with that symbol, and you were drawn to it somehow. You intuitively or instinctively brought it to the surface. And if you were to continue practicing that and working on that own, your own intuitive ability that you have there, let me show you what one day you'll be capable of. Or something along them lines, and now you can lead perfectly into you having a connection with all of the symbols, being able to locate the chosen one wherever it is. Mm. And so there's, there's so much you can do with that. And the beauty of these cards as well is, even if you've got a spectator like this going, go on, what's that? What is it? Oh, that's the waves. Well, yeah. Because... Like, the markings are so easy to see. It's just... Yeah. Uh, I mean, when, when it comes to stuff like that, this is an important note, actually, because sometimes uh, you do get people that are mm. like this and you literally can't see the mark. So all you need to do is just reframe the demonstration. Mm. Say, so place it face, uh, face down on top of your hand. Yeah. And then you catch the mark in. And now place your other hand on top. Yeah. And, you know... And I mean, generally, aside from that sort of distance read where you clearly demonstrate exactly how they have to hold the card and all of this kind of stuff, mm. um, it's, it's rare that you're going to just say to someone, choose a card, I'm going to tell you what it is. Yeah, exactly. It's dressed you up. Know? I always like to talk about the haunted key in that sense. So if you just pull out a haunted key and went, look at this, the key turns. They don't care, but it's the story that makes the haunted key so powerful. Same as this. Mm. Another thing you could say, if your spectator has got the card and they're like this, you can say, all right then. So what your body language is currently showing me is that you are closed off and maybe challenging me in some way. But I'll be honest with you, this is not about me and what I can do. It's about us and what we can do. This is just a form of communication. And unfortunately, 
a form of communication that's been long forgotten and there's nothing about our daily lives that encourages us to explore that anymore and that's the whole purpose and the whole reason behind why I do what I do. It's only communication. Now if I tried to call you and you wouldn't answer the phone, no communication can be made. But if we stand any chance of doing this, we have to work together here. Just relax, take a couple of deep breaths and instead of closing yourself off like this, creating a shield or a barrier, I want you to be open. Just hold the card face down in the palm of your hand and then look at that fucking marking. <laughs> and say, great, just gently place your other hand on top. There we go, you're much more relaxed. And this is going to be much easier for us to do. And then just make it more gentle than, there you go, you've just tricked them into stop being such a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh, a lot has to be said uh, as far as Little techniques like that that just allow yeah. you to do Cause, what you want to do. The, the thing is, if they are doing that, if they are being stubborn, just reframe the whole thing. They think mm. that this is a challenge. Oh, I bet you can't guess what this is. Well, you're right. I can't guess. I can only do this intuitively, and it's a form of communication. I also can't do this without your help. We're going to have to work together. And it's, again, it's yeah. not about what I can do. It's about what we can do. And, they and, just, and then, it, really, you're, that's, that's, that's the politest way of saying, behave yourself. Stop messing around. Let me have a look at the back of that card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think uh, that, uh, you know, that entire thing, obviously, it's, uh, you know, to get people to play along. Um, mm. And, well, not play, play along is the wrong word. Play nice, I suppose. Yeah, or to just... Um, just to, because the thing is, as well, if they do that, they're robbing themselves of what could potentially be a beautiful and memorable moment. And not only they're robbing themselves of that experience, but anybody who's watching as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's completely true. You know, mentalism mm. is just a form of communication. Yeah, totally. Uh, one person to another. Uh, it mm. just happens to happen in a different way mm. than uh, what people are used to by using lots of sneaky and, techniques. Yeah, and, and that's the thing as well. I always play so innocent when I'm performing. I really do. I mean, I like to be so many steps ahead of my spectator and I've got so many different techniques to get them to behave how I want them to. But I always, I don't let them see that. You know, they say the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I don't let people know I have all this sneaky stuff in mind. I just play really sweet, really genuine. And I say, look, if, if I feel they're going to challenge me in some way, I say, look, if you want to make this difficult or make this go wrong or not work at all, then straight away you win. I can't, I'm not very good at being challenged or, or dealing with any confrontation in this, and that's not really how it works. This is about us just sharing a beautiful moment together, and if you don't want to do that, I'll ask somebody else. Yeah, totally. And, and really, it just again, immediately takes all the yeah, fun like, out of it. Like, you, oh, yeah, exactly. Instantly kills the fun. It's like... If you want to make this go wrong, if you want to challenge me, if you want to ruin this, straight away you win. And it's like, and it's like well, there you <laughs> what's, what's the point yeah. then? <laughs> and it's like, so if you do feel like you want to challenge me in some way, I'm not very good at dealing with that kind of thing and it hinders my own ability to, to create these beautiful experiences for you. So if you'd like to maybe see me try this with somebody else and then afterwards you can have another go, that's absolutely fine. But I can only do this with somebody who is open, honest and genuinely willing to go into this with an open heart. And what I've basically said there is you're not open, you're not honest, you're an idiot, let's try this with someone else. Yeah. But same, as, same as the, yeah. Or you could, <laughs> or you could even use this old hypnosis line, line that I put in one of my I Create As I Speak book. So the original line was if somebody said to me, can anyone be hypnotized? I'd look at them and say, yeah, if you are of average or above intelligence, you can be hypnotized. And what you're basically saying there is, if I can't hypnotize you, it means you're stupid. Same sort of thing. Now, you can turn to them and say, now... Uh, when it comes to mind reading, this doesn't work with everybody, but if you are of average or, imbo or above intelligence, then yeah, this should work. And I'm basically saying, if, they, if I can't read your mind, it means you're stupid. <laughs> and I don't say that to everyone, I only say that if somebody's being quite challenging with me, but I don't mind doing and saying whatever I have to do and tricking them in any way I can to just make them behave. Because the thing is, it's not that I don't want to face it. Well, firstly, I'm shutting down a challenge before it even arises, but at the same time, this is my art, this is my passion, and I know it's beautiful. I'm not going to let one idiot get in the way of this, just because there could be a handful of people watching that, well, this could be memorable, this is a, this is a performance art, this is beautiful. And I'm not going to let this, this idiot ruin that. Mm. So, yeah, sometimes it can help to just play sweet and innocent and make them feel like it's not even worth 
challenging you or trying when really in your head you're thinking yeah do as you're fucking told <laughs> apologize for swearing but it's 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 kind of the, the attitude i keep in the back of my mind because i'm dealing with drunk people in loud places and they will be confrontational and challenging but just reframe the situation take that power away from them and then suddenly they'll give up mm. and then when they do they'll thank you for it the moment they relax and have this experience they're like their mind is blown and it's like how you were a moment ago, this could never have taken place. Mm. But because, and I'd like to thank you for going into this with an open mind and an open heart. Because how you feel right now is exactly what I wanted to give you. Thank you. And then they could be your best, they could be your best friend for the rest of the night if you've mm. turned their attitude around. <laughs> right. Enough of that. Yeah, anyway. Let's, uh, let's move on. Let's do it. So let's take a look at how you would... Um, how Basically, if, for the if whole somebody show. wanted to do your show from start mm. to because this is this is great with just this deck and the things you've learned in this download, you've got a whole act, you've got a whole show ready to go that just fits mm. in your pocket. You can go and do this anywhere. Yeah, so fits, yeah, show is, fits in a bum bag. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and I've seen you with your little bum bag as well. Yeah, um, but yeah, show me how to uh, how to put this. Basically, how to set this up as a show and then how to transition from one piece to the next. Let's do it. Excellent. 